Welcome to section 10.2. Okay, gentle people, what we're going to talk about in this lecture is we're going to talk about an isothermal process. So iso means same and thermal means temperature. So this process is going to be conducted at constant temperature. So let's go ahead and see the implications of this. So if I look at internal energy, this is the way I define internal energy. And another equation for internal energy is this one, NCV delta T. Now, if T is constant, that means the change in temperature is zero. So anything times zero is going to be zero. So for an isothermal process, delta E is going to equal zero. Now, if delta E equals zero, well, that means Q plus W has to equal zero. And what this implies is that Q and W are equal in magnitude, but opposite in sign. Now, I want you to keep this in mind. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a little thought experiment. Now, you can go ahead and read section 10.2, and they run through this thought experiment with this theoretical machine. Now, I'm going to go ahead and run through some of the calculations and, and some of the derivations. Now, I want you to bear with me because at the end of this lecture, I'm going to give you the take home message. So what I'm going to do with my theoretical machine is I'm going to do an isothermal process. So that means that I'm going to use this material such that the temperature does not change when I do this process. And so here's what my machine is going to do. I'm going to have this ideal gas and I'm going to have it at a certain volume. I'm going to call this volume one. Now what's going to happen is this gas is going to expand. Now the gas is going to expand to four times the original volume. So what I'm going to say is that V2 or the final volume is going to equal four times my original volume. As the gas expands, it's going to pull on this little rope attached to a pulley. And so what's going to happen is it's going to pull this mass up. So the gas is going to expand, the gas is going to do work, and this work is going to lift this mass off from the ground. Now what I want to do is I want to calculate the amount of work this machine is going to do. Now, there's one other thing that I'm going to impart on this process, and that is when I go from volume one to volume two, I'm going to do this in what I call a single step. That means I'm going to have my mass on the ground, and in an instant, I'm going to lift the mass up to the full height. So it's not going to drag slowly. This is going to go boom to boom right there in one step that is instantaneous. So this is going to be the work for a one step process. Now to calculate work, we're going to do negative P external delta V. Now what I'm going to say is that the external pressure is, go is going to be the final pressure that the gas comes to. So let's go ahead and calculate some things out. Now, what I know from the ideal gas law is P1V1 is a constant, so it has to equal P2V2 because that's a constant. So let's go ahead and plug things in. So P1V1. Now, I'm going to try to solve for P2, my final pressure. I know my final volume is four times my initial volume because that's what I said the machine was going to do. It was going to expand to four times its volume. Now, if I go ahead and solve for P2, the final pressure is going to be just a quarter of the initial pressure. So with all of this said, let's go ahead and calculate work. So I'm going to plug all these values into this equation. So work for a one-step process equals the external pressure, which I know is my final pressure, which is going to be P1 over four. The change in volume is going to be, is going to be four times my initial volume minus my initial volume. So if I were to calculate work here, this becomes negative three fourths P1 
v1. So I'm going to write this on the slide. Work for a one-step process is going to equal negative three-fourths p1 v1. So let's do this process slightly different. Okay, gentle people, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to do this same expansion. So I'm going to have, so I'm going to do this same expansion, but I'm going to do this in two steps. So what I mean by that, I know to fully lift my mass, I have to expand four times my volume. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and expand my volume to two times my volume. And then after I expand it to two times my volume, I'm going to go the full expansion to four times my volume. So what I'm doing is I'm lifting this mass in two steps. I'm going halfway up in step one, and then I'm going the whole rest of the way in step two. So again, boom, boom, and then boom, boom. So again, each one of these steps is going to happen in an instant. And since I'm doing them, it goes one step, two steps. So let's go ahead and calculate the amount of work that happens when I do a two-step process. So this is work as a two-step process. And work as a two-step process is going to equal the first step plus the second step. So let's go ahead and calculate each one of these steps out. So they all follow the same formula. So for the first step in my two-step process, it's going to be negative P external delta V. So my external pressure is going to be the final pressure that I come to in this step. And so in that case, it's P1 over 2. Now remember what my expansion is. I'm going to twice the volume from my original volume. So if I were to calculate this out, this is P1 V1 over 2. Now let's go ahead and do the second step. So the second step in my two-step process, I still use the same formula. And if I want to look at the final pressure, well, since I expanded to four times the amount, it's P1 over 4. And so remember, my final volume is four times my original. But remember, the second step is starting at two times that original volume. So if I go ahead and calculate this out, this becomes negative P1 V1 over 2. And now what we can do is we can add these two steps together. And what we get is negative P1 V1. So let's go ahead and write this down on our slide. So work for a two-step process is going to be negative P1 V1. Now what you guys will notice is by simply changing the number of steps, I calculate a different amount of work my machine can do. In the one-step process, I got negative three-fourths P1 V1. And in the two-step process, I got negative P1 V1. Now, what you guys will see is that your book does it in six steps. So up on top right here is the two-step process. And this area represents the amount of work that my machine does. And so here's my first step. Here's my second step. Now what your book did is it went ahead and calculated six steps. And this area is the amount of work that machine did. Now if I want to compare the two-step area and the six-step area, we can take a look at this graph where the blue is the two-step and the six-step is that original purple. Now what you guys will see is that the six step process gets me even more work done by the machine. So what you guys will notice is I am increasing the amount of work the more steps I take. And so if I want to get the most work out of my machine, well, you guessed it, I have to take an infinite number of steps. Now to get the area under the curve, we have to use some calculus. You guys can look at the derivation, but here is the equation that I'm going to give you on your info sheet. And that is, I can calculate the amount of work 
that is done in an infinite number of steps. Now, to denote it's an infinite number of steps, we're going to call this work reversible. So that's going to be work with REV subscripted. Now, I'll talk to you guys about what reversible means, but here's the equation. Work reversible equals negative nRT, where n is the number of moles, r is our gas constant, t is our temperature, and I'm going to take the natural log of the final volume over the initial volume. Now, what you guys will remember is before we talked about this theoretical machine, I told you guys that for an isothermal process, Q equals negative W. So what I can do is I can calculate the reversible heat. And that's just going to be the negative of that equation that I boxed. Now, I'm not going to spend time going through this derivation. You, you guys can look it up in your book. But the next thing your book does is it goes ahead and calculates the reverse process. And what I mean by that is I'm going to go ahead and recharge my machine. And by recharging my machine, what I mean is, is once the machine has fully lifted the mass by expanding to four times its volume, well, I can go ahead and reset my machine. I can go ahead and compress my gas again, meaning the mass is going to go down instead of being lifted up. And then I can start the whole process over again. So in this case, I'm doing a compression where I start at four times my original volume and I go back to my original volume. And they do this for a one-step compression. They do this for a two-step compression. But what I want to get to is the take-home message. So here is the take-home message of 10.2. So what we have listed in this table is the calculations for doing a process. So the first is the expansion. And remember what the expansion is doing. This is the machine doing work. And what I mean by that is it is going to go ahead and lift up that little mass. Now what you guys will notice is the more steps I take, the more work I can get out of my machine. And so the maximum amount of work I can get out of my machine is an infinite number of steps. And here's the calculation for the maximum amount of work my machine can do. Now, the other thing they calculated is me resetting or recharging the machine. And that is a compression process. If I compress it, I am recharging the machine. Or in other words, I am putting energy into the machine or I am working on the machine. And so what this means is that I am going to put the mass back on the floor. I'm going to compress it. Now, if we take a look at the work calculated here, if I do one step, two step, three step, and then an infinite steps, what you guys will notice is a trend. The more steps I take, the less energy it is for me to recharge that machine. So if I do it under one step, it's going to take a tremendous amount of energy for me to, to recharge that machine. But if I take an infinite number of steps, that's where I spend the least amount of energy to reset my machine. So let's go ahead and do a full cycle. And what I mean by that is I'm going to have the machine lift up the mass and then I'm going to reset the machine back to its original position. Now, if I do this as a one step process, well, the machine expands and then I have to recharge the machine. What you guys will notice is these aren't the same numbers to do this one cycle. I have to pay energy to do this cycle. Now, this is true for two steps, three steps, four steps. There's only one way that I can put in a certain amount of energy and get exactly that same amount of energy back out. And that is if I do an infinite number of steps to recharge my machine and have my machine take an infinite number of steps to do work. And that's why we call 
an infinite number of steps a reversible process. Because whatever I put in is what I get out. And so essentially, my universe is left unchanged. So let's go ahead and see why this is a soul crushing idea. What I just described to you is a process where I put in work, but what this results in is some of my work is converted to heat. Now, when you recharge your battery in like your cell phone, you are doing work onto that battery. You're putting energy into that system, but you will never get that energy back out as work because some of that energy is lost as heat. In other words, you applied ordered energy and that energy got dispersed or disordered. And this is the crux of the energy crisis. You might say to yourself, based on the first law of thermodynamics, that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So why would you ever run out of energy? And the reason is, is the energy crisis has to do with ordered energy, energy that I can use as work. Now, what happens is my ordered energy is constantly being dispersed and it is becoming unusable. You drive your car, you expend energy, but that energy is dispersed through the noise, the heat, the expansion, friction. And so you can never recollect that as useful work. Well, I hope that made sense and remember to stay safe, Chem1B.